Hello and welcome back to this channel. So today's tutorial is going to be about creating this recipe card in Adobe Illustrator. So let's just get started. So we'll start off by creating our artboard. So go to file and new. We have to create an A5 size artboard because that's the size of the recipe card that I've planned. You can actually print two of these on a single A4 sheet. I'm going to change this to inches. You can use whatever you want. Let's give 8.3 into 5.8 and in here you should give it a CMYK and make sure this is at least 300 ppi and then click create. So we have our artboard ready but I'm going to go ahead and click on my artboard tool or you can also press shift and O hold your option or alt key down click hold your shift key down and drag and make another copy of this. Now press V on your keyboard to go back to the selection tool and let's forget about this artboard for a while and we'll just use this one for timing. I'm just going to move this a little more. So the first thing that we're going to do is create our design. As you can see, our design is pretty simple and it's pretty easy to make as well. And we'll use pen tool. Please don't get intimidated. It's going to be super simple. So in here, if you don't see the pen tool, right click and click on pen tool or you can also press P on your keyboard. If you do not have to use a pen tool at all, so pen tool, you can click and go somewhere without holding any key actually and click and it will create any kind of line that you want. But when you are dragging and if you click and hold and drag, it creates an arc kind of a thing. And then you can also use these handles to modify your arc. So what we're going to do for this one is click, go up somewhere here and click and drag and make a petal kind of a thing, something like this. And now come back and go ahead and join this part of your artboard. You can also press V on your keyboard so that you get away from all of this. Okay, now for the second petal, I'm just going to go to my pen tool again. Now click, I'll take it somewhere here and drag a little bit so that it overlaps the first petal a little bit and then come back and join here. So this doesn't look exactly the kind that we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go to the direct selection tool. I'll just try to drag it so that it looks a bit something like this. But you can also make a lot of differences in this. You can go to your curvature tool and you can drag this however you want. And probably I'll put one here and try to make it something like this. And you can also click on this and click delete and it's going to get deleted completely. And you can also make it a little bigger and probably try to move it in a little like this. And there you go, your petal is ready. Now you can just click on this, right click, transform, reflect, and let's do a vertical reflect and click on preview so that you see what's happening and click on copy. And now just click, hold your shift key down and then go and place it here. I hope you guys found it easy to follow. If you didn't, let's quickly go through what we did. We go to the pen tool, click, click somewhere in 45 degree angle and then make a round like this. And now just go ahead and click on this point here. Next, let's go to the direct selection tool and make sure we have arranged this like, you know, especially this part, like however swollen or something we want. And now let's go to the curvature tool and you can drag this to any point you want, like this. You can also click and add, or even when it's highlighted, you can also click delete on your keyboard to delete it. And now let me go ahead and make it something like this. And you see how I created that? And once you're done, you can press V on your keyboard to go back to your selection tool. Now let me just delete it. Okay, so we have this, but we have to change the colors. And for this, I've used a color palette from Adobe Color. I'll share it with you. Don't worry, I'll leave the color codes in the description box and you can use them. For stroke, I've given something very plain that is yellow kind of a thing. And for fill, this one, I've created three different versions of it. So the first one has really dark version, something like this. Click and select everything and hold your option or alt key down, click and drag to make a copy. And this one, the fill, we are going to give this color. And let's make one more. Click and select everything. Hold your option or alt and drag to make one more. And let's give it this yellow. You know what? The outlines, let's just give it white. Just going to go to my swatches. If you cannot see it here, it's under window and swatches. Your library is also under window. Everything over here, you can find it under window option. Go to stroke and click on white. Okay, this looks fine to me. And now I'm going to go to my 
line segment tool if you cannot see it right click and line segment tool click hold your shift key down and drag to make a line segment like this and for the stroke we are going to give the darkest brown that we had press v on your keyboard to go back to selection tool click on this hold your option alt key down click and drag and you put it here and i'll make one here as well all right so click and select all these and now hold your shift key down and reduce this in size because we don't want it so big so now i'm going to each flower like select everything press command or control g to group them and now let's arrange it so the black one comes here you can put the orange here and the yellow one is kind of overlapping something like this so i guess this looks fine and now let's make the diamond shapes that we have so you can also go to your pen tool again and it's super easy just click 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 and click and as you see it's not uniform you can make uniform if you want go ahead and do that but i'm not concentrating so much on it because i like it like in random shapes okay press v on your keyboard to go back and now let's select this and remove the stroke and give some color. So now it's time to arrange these things. So let's take these and I think I'm going to reduce the size by holding my shift key down. I'll drag it and place it somewhere here. And then let's try to put some of these in. Okay, this is okay. We'll fill the rest of the artboard with these triangles and other things once we have established the rest of the artwork kind of a thing. Okay, Okay. now we have to go to the second part. So I'm just going to click and select everything. Hold your option or alt key down, click and drag and let's place it here. And now we're going to try and repeat this around. I mean, you're not actually doing a repeating pattern. You could do that, but just hold your option key and try to uh, make a few copies of it. And you don't actually have to make the copy of the whole design as such like you know batches but you can also try and individually select these florals and try to make some copies like this and if you have these things which are like tiny you can click on that and you can actually double click to go to isolation mode and drag them out but make sure you hold your shift key Okay, so we'll come back to this later again. So now let's go to our rectangle tool. Click and select. Make it something like this. And you see these dots over here? Just click on any one of those and make it into a rounded rectangle. Also think I'm just going to click on all of these by holding my shift key down. And drag it down a little bit so that it doesn't overlap. You can also reduce the size because then you can fit more the design in here and I'm going to go ahead and click on the brown one hold my option or alt key down click and drag and let's make a copy here so this one is ready and now I'll click on my rectangle tool again and you see these pink lines it helps you when you're trying to align stuff and things so make sure you go to view and click on smart guides so you need to turn it on click and drag and now let's make sure we convert it into like this by the way if you feel this area is too much just click on both holding your shift key and reduce this a bit so that you have enough space to put in all your stuff in here i think that's fine but i still feel like maybe these flowers are a bit too thick so hold your shift key down and click on all of these and make it a little thinner like this you can do the same thing here if you want just click and select everything and make it a little thinner that looks good. Let's get back here. All right, now it's time to make our title and stuff like that. So click on your type tool and click and type in recipe. So for this one, I have used a font called as Beth Ellen Regular. I think this is a Google font, if I'm not wrong. So it's free to download. I'll leave the link in the description box. You can get it. So I'm just going to click on recipe and probably keep put it at 20. Let's see how big that is. Maybe a little more. Okay, this looks good. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it over here and click on this tool again and type card. And this one, I'm going to change it to quicksand. This is a Adobe font, bold. And let's give this a orange color and make it 20. I'll make this caps and also medium and probably 18 and move it so that it comes a bit after the p and this one i'll make it 32 i want that 
definitely a little bigger and let's put it like this this can be even smaller maybe 15 it's just that i want it to fit snugly like it should end where the e ends because then it looks nicer okay that looks good i'm gonna select everything press command or control g to group it because now it's easy for me to move it around and this one i think i'm going to make it a little thinner and put in out like this and this one let's increase the size because we need more space to write these things so it makes more sense to have it something like that and now let's put in the top things that's title serves this is again optional you can change it to whatever you want prep time cook time go ahead and put this somewhere here and serves comes is here as well and you see I don't have enough space so I'm just going to click on this and reduce it and next is prep time and cook time will come somewhere here and now I'm just going to go ahead and I think I want this a little thicker uh, maybe 1.5 and this one as well so I just press I on my keyboard and go ahead and select this so by the way for stroke you can go to window and then stroke and you can find this option V on your keyboard to go back to selection tool okay we have everything ready and now it's time to make line segments so click drag hold your shift key down and drag and it will make a line segment so for color we're going to give something that is this orange color and for stroke we're going to change this to 0.5 because the thing is we want it to be as light as possible so that you can write your handwriting and then it will still look good so let's make this as round and round it's not necessary then click on dashed line and make sure it is three point dash you should see that there's a line segment so click on it hold your option alt key down click hold your shift key down and drag it a little this space is really dependent on how much you want and press command or control d to repeat it all the way till the end now i'm going to go ahead and click on all of these you can also click and drag like this and make sure you unselect the outer box by holding your shift key and then unselects Control or command G to group it. And now let's reduce this to about this much. And then hold your option or alt key down. Click, hold your shift key down. And make sure you leave a bit of space between these two like this. And now let's increase this back. Now I can do the same thing. Just click on this. Hold your option or alt key down. Click, shift and move it in here. And I want to increase the size a little bit so that it matches and all that stuff. But I don't like it that there's so many of them. So I'm just gonna go inside this by double clicking and then you can select these and click on delete. Now let's go back out of the isolation mode. And then you see there are two things here like you have space to put things and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on these things and because I wanna make a little bit of space on the top. So I'll just push my arrow key down twice. So that there's some nice space on the top. Okay, now to add some titles. So I'm just gonna click on this, click on my optional alt key down, click and drag and place it here. And I will type in notes. This is optional, you can give in ingredients here as well. It's totally up to you. Hold your optional alt key down, click and drag. Hold your optional alt key down, click and drag as well. And in here we'll give description and in here ingredients. So if you feel the font size is too big, click on all of these by holding your shift key down and I'll give about 13. Let's make it a little smaller. Now let's go ahead and put some line segments here. So click on your line segment, click and drag until here by holding your shift key obviously. And now press I on your keyboard and go ahead and select this one. So if you press V on your keyboard again, you'll see that it has selected this. So click on this optional alt key down, click shift key down and drag and drop it here. And make sure you reduce this so that there's no overlap. And in here, we're going to click, hold your shift key and drag it so that it does not touch the text. Same here and hold your optional alt, click and drag, click shift and drag. I feel like the orange lines are too thick. So I'm just gonna hold my shift and select all of these even the ones on the top and let's change it to 0.25 and click outside. Okay, now let's go ahead and use these things and place them where I think it'll look very nice. You can also use different colors, like I could give some yellows as well. It's totally fine, actually. You don't have to stick to just two colors or three colors or something like that because it's your recipe card. Do whatever you want.
Okay, so I think our main page is complete. You can also delete off this top line here because I feel like it's too close to the title. But this one you can keep it. It doesn't matter. So now that's ready, it's time to create this one. So I can actually drag this rectangle and put it here as well. But I'm just going to go ahead, select my rectangle tool and click and drag and make something as big as this. Maybe not so much because we want to retain the same gap that we have here. Let's just press on center and then center. You can find this under window and align. Let's go ahead and click and drag this a little bit. And for the outer lining, let's give this brown color and make sure this is set to about 1.5. Okay, and let's click on this floral and bring it a little bit inside. And even this as well, either it go, should go outside like this or should be inside. So one of these things you can decide what you want to do. And I also forgot that I need to put in some of these other color diamonds and stuff like that because right now it looks kind of empty. Let's do that. Okay, that looks fine. So now let's click on this Control or C or Command C to copy, Control F or Command F to paste on top. Okay, now it's time to cut this design to this outer space. So I'm just going to click on that rectangle that we made just now. And if you want, what you can do is you can just hold your option or Alt key down and click and make a copy for just like that. And in here, select this and make sure you go to your stroke and remove the stroke. And for fill, let's give some white. Now select the design and the rectangle, right click and make clipping mask. But before that, you should know that the rectangle has to be on top of the design. So if it's the other way around, then it won't really work. So click on make clipping mask and your clipping mask is ready. And now let's click on this and you can go to your transparency tool. You can find it under window and then transparency. In here, let's reduce the opacity of this, maybe this much. So this really depends on how dark you want your design to be uh, so that you can write on it. So make sure you select it and make it as light as possible so that your handwriting will be visible. And we'll bring back this rectangle that we had and you just put it on top of it. So now let's click on this line segments that we created earlier. Hold your option or Alt key down, click and hold your shift key down and uh, you can bring it. You don't have to hold shift, but just in case, I'll just make it like this. And now you can click and drag it all the way down. And you can also click, double click, and maybe select a few of them. Hold your option key down, click, hold your shift key down, and make some copies like this. You can also select all of these, and if you think it's too light, just click on a darker color. You can do this and remove stroke. If you click outside, you will have a darker color. I think there were two of them here. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete one. Okay, so your second page is ready as well. Once you're ready with everything, you can just export this as file, export and export as, and it'll create two different artboards, which is of each of A5 size. But now if you want to print this on a A4 sheet of paper, it's uh, pretty simple to do that as well. What you can do is if you want to clip it up, you can clip it up. So you, you can just go to your rectangle tool, click and drag and make a rectangle as big as the artboard. If you don't know if it's right, you can actually click on transform. Again, you'll see it in window transform. 8.3 and 5.8 was the height that we made. So it's okay. And now in here, I'll remove the stroke. I'll go to fill and give white. And now let's go ahead and click and select this right click and click on make clipping mask. So it's going to make sure that everything else gets removed. And now it's time to actually go ahead and change this artboard to an A4 size. That is what we can do is, once you have this ready, just go ahead and click on artboard. And in here you see height as 5.8. And for an A4 sheet, it is 11.7. Click enter. Oops, we had selected that one. So I'll just undo that. I'll select this artboard and give 11.6 click enter. So you can actually go back to your selection tool. So now what you can do is you can click on this, which is a clipping mask, by the way. So it moves around very nicely. Go ahead and place it on the top of the artboard. Actually, now you can click on this, hold your option or alt key down, click, hold your shift key down and make a copy so that it intersects real nicely. So I'm just going to click on both these two and click on center. And for the second sheet as well, let's go back to the artboard and click on this and let's change it to 11.7 inches and go to your selection tool. 
And now let's move this one. Okay, this is two things now. So I'm going to click and select everything over there and command G to group it. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it so that it stands something like this. Click, hold your optional alt key down and drag and make sure you move it something like this. Okay, now I want both the artboards to be right next to each other so that I can compare them a little bit. So I'm going to click on my artboard, click on this and I'll bring it here so that they stand close to each other and click on my selection tool. The reason I did this is because I want to make sure that these two are completely aligned. So I'm just going to drag it down a bit and this one as well. You can see that this is going to be the cut mark here. So I'm just going to click and drag it up a little bit. Okay, now it's time to export it. But before that, we need to save it. So press Command or Control S to save it and give whatever file you want name. Click OK. And now let's export it. You can export it as a PNG, but in this option, I would highly suggest saving it as a PDF. So click on save as, select PDF, save. Let's select high quality print. Make sure you uncheck this because if this is checked, it means that the file size is going to be really huge. But if you uncheck this, this means that you will never be able to edit the PDF again, like the design on it. So what it also means is that if you did not save this Illustrator file, then you will never be able to get back to it. So save this file as an Illustrator file first and then try to save it as a PDF. And then you can go to Marks and Bleeds and you can also put in Trim Marks if you want and click on Save PDF. That's really optional. Click on OK. Now let's go ahead and check our PDFs. OK, so this is our PDF and obviously it comes with a Trim Mark, which is really great. And we're going to reduce the size of this just to show you how it looks. So this will be the first page and this is going to be the second page. So when you're going to print this one, you just have to choose as print front and back. And only then you'll get both these options on the back. So by the way, this also depends on the printer. What some printers do is this will get printed like this, but this page will get printed from the opposite direction. So make sure you do a test print. If this does not work, just go to your Illustrator file and select this and then rotate it by 90 degree like this and then print your file. So that is printer dependent. So you have to test it out for yourself. And after you have this, just cut it into two recipe cards and you're good to write all your recipes down. I hope you like this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and uh, I will give this recipe card as a freebie in my next newsletter probably. So if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, make sure you do that. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe to this channel and also press on that notification bell because it will just inform you whenever I post a new video. And uh, thank you for watching and uh, okay, I guess I'll see you in the next video then. Bye-bye.